What if I told you that there was a way to predict and know the shape of fluids after any set period of time? The Navier-Stokes equation strive to do just that. When talking about fluids, I mean both liquids and gases, since air particles behave to fill up the space within containers. We also have some assumptions about the fluids. More on that later. Let's explore the first equation. U represents the vector field of a fluid. Vectors represent the velocity of a specific particle within the fluid. This symbol, called nambla, an upside down triangle, is the gradient. That is, the derivatives or the rate of change for each vector with respect to all three dimensions of our world. Specifically, nabla is a divergence of our field, whether particles in the fluid eventually diverge towards infinity or converge towards a singularity. Negative values converge while positive values diverge. Notice how, at any value, whether positive or negative, vector magnitudes change. This implies that matter within the fluid either gets created or destroyed, which is impossible in real life. Therefore, the divergence value of the vector field is set to zero, meaning there's no change in matter. Deceptively difficult. The second equation just represents Newton's second law of motion. Force equals mass times acceleration. Remember, each of our vectors represents velocity, and acceleration is a derivative of velocity. Therefore, this is the derivative of each vector in U with respect to time. Instead of mass, rho represents density. Since focus is mainly on the motion of singular particles, we divide the total mass of the fluid by its volume. The other terms represent internal and external forces. These first two are changes in pressure and viscosity for diffusion. The last term F simply means external forces, usually gravity. With these equations, why can't we just predict indefinitely? Let's give it a shot. And here's the problem. Our equations have many limitations placed to prevent scary calculations, like incompressibility, being Newtonian, and disregarding turbulence. With even more. Try as we might as of right now, we just don't know whether these equations can be mathematically proven without them. And that's the million dollar question. Whether there exists a mathematical pattern for the chaotic nature of fluids. Even so, they still serve practical purposes, like weather predictions, object aerodynamics, and simulating liquids. Hey, buy coffee! Appreciating these equations brings us a better understanding of our world and a deeper appreciation of our universe.